Ahoy friends, welcome to building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan and this is a project to build a Chamberlain Alpha Dory from uh, John Gardner's The Dory Book. Illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we'll be out in the shop doing some more riveting on the uh, third strikes of planking. This time we will be on the starboard side. Well, thanks for stopping by and uh, let's uh, get going and get out into the shop, see what needs to be done. to it. I think I may try and pin both of these planks with a few rivets. Yeah, they're actually not going to move a lot. See, I'm pushing that one in and this one really isn't moving. So, oh, we don't need to mess around with that, but if uh, if moving one, if moving the bay here was having an effect on it over here, then like I'd try and catch it with a few of them on both, and then pull in the whole rest of it. But it doesn't look like it's going to be a big deal, so maybe we'll just go one bay at a time. mentioned in those uh, previous videos, you know, I'm kind of, I'm going in at close to the angle, you know, 90 degrees in all directions of the uh, plank on the inside, because it's a little bit easier to, uh, to back an angled head on the outside, and it does flatten out to the, uh, it flattens to the plank. It's easier that than, I can than it is to peen an angled uh, rivet on the inside, just because you're, uh, you know, as the washer is setting there, it's not, it's not square to the flat, which means you're kind of peening, trying to peen at an angle, and the ball doesn't hit quite as well on one side as it does on the other, so you kind of end up with a not so great rivet head. and cool out here this evening. <laughs> Finally I can be out in the shop without sweating. It's been quite a year. So I'm definitely not complaining. Gorgeous weather. We've been having all except for the Except for the uh, Northeaster that blew through. Had plenty of rain, so that's good. The drought is pretty much abated. Whatever drought there was. Uh, I was uh, 
the gosh probably four years ago now but the uh, all the reservoirs were pretty low there for gosh almost a year So a buddy of mine happened upon uh, one of these uh, automated buoy reports from that past uh, northeaster that I was able to get some footage of down on the, off of Cape Ann. Turns out that uh, reporting up to 32 foot seas so uh, that was a pretty good uh, flow we got that came through I've seen uh, 21 foot predicted for that same stretch of water but It's likely that, that that's what materialized because that storm was about the size of this one, but yeah, I'd never, never seen an actual 32 foot confirmed. But like I say, there was plenty of warning with that storm, so it's not like you couldn't. see I'm not sure how far out it was really predicted by the weather service which uh, that's kind of the same situation that occurred with the uh, that perfect storm back in the 90s there was uh, one local weather guy who called it just about right and nobody else was really even talking about it until the uh, So I've been trying to uh, I'm trying to think 
through a sort of arrangement for this little craft as far as uh, the seats and then the uh, possibility of developing some sort of a little sleeping platform. So it could be uh, so it would never really be in the way of the of the use of the boat, you know, rowing or sailing. But something that uh, would be decently comfortable if you did end up wanting to go for an overnight. Yeah, so the, uh, the sail on this boat is quite interesting in that it's uh, more or less uh, an equilateral triangle. Very similar in shape to a, a sunfish sail, but uh, not, quite as, not quite as acute an angle uh, down along the luff, between the luff and the foot. So it's uh, similar to a sunfish sail, but with the... Uh, with the boom laid out more, or not, not angled to account for the lateen rig. It's got a more upright loft to it. So, um, yeah, so you end up anyway with a triangular shaped piece of cloth. And then, you know, just thinking about how that could be used to possibly form a rudimentary tent structure. Now, depending on the time of year, you're going to need absolutely essential a, a bug net. Um, so that's you know, an added complication over and above just using the cloth of the sail to keep the dew off here. You really do kind of need that ability to hang a bug net at a moment's notice. <laughs> Unless you want to have a horror story rather than an adventure to tell people about. Um, They make mosquito netting that, uh, <clears throat> that you could um, rig up under a boom tent. Uh, I suppose the other option is some sort of a mosquito net that goes, that's incorporated with a sleeping bag. But then you've got a You're stuck in a sleeping bag. Um, during the possible, quite possibly during summer months. Uh, so that's kind of not ideal. Uh, the other possibility is if you go with a more sort of substantial tent structure, you know, you could have a mosquito net incorporated into the tent and uh, you know, have something where you'd have ends that could open and close, but then that one, you know, that would definitely not be the sail itself, so that would be an additional 
piece of gear that you don't have to bring along, which might well be worth it if you were planning on doing a lot of tenting in this thing. Looking good. Okay, we got a bunch of uh, rivets in there, nice and tight. It's all good down there. progress on these uh, these bays between the frames are actually significantly shorter than the, than the stem and stern so as Fewer rivets in each. Little section. Good. And let's see, I think I can get that one. Get a backing block on that one. And then I'll do this one and this one, and then we'll take the kick stick off and uh, and do uh, this one here, which is behind the kick stick. Unless the kick stick just bounces off before then we'll say. Just caught it trying to move. Yeah, so anyway, it's uh It's definitely possible to, around here anyway, locally. Depending on your location. And the time of year. It's possible to sleep, camp out, 
without a uh, bug net. Um, but then if you drop anchor like maybe two miles away, or if you happen to be dropping anchor at one time of year and not another, like say, uh, like there's, there's one week in the spring where the midges come out. So if you're a week before, you're fine. If you're a week after, you'll have a night that you'll remember for the rest of your life for all the wrong reasons. So, um, yeah, you really need the ability to put up some sort of a bug net if you plan on camping regularly at all in the boat. So that's something that can be hung underneath the uh, the boom. If you can get a platform of the right size, you can actually set up. If you can match the sizes between a platform and a tent, uh, either a one or two man, uh, the absolute smallest style uh, backpacking tents. Then uh, yeah, you can get a pretty usable, pretty comfortable setup. So that's what we're going to be going for. Um, I've kind of decided against trying to sleep on the floorboards, just because the uh, bottom is only twenty-one inches, and. Uh, We've got a center board box in the way for a lot of the a lot of the width. Now it's actually a little bit wider than 21 inches because you're going to have the floorboards in it, which go up to the height of the frames, which gives you another probably four inches per side. So 21 inches plus eight inches. But even so, it's a uh, it's still way too narrow to sleep two people. You know, there's no way that's going to work. And if, so if you go up to seat level and make a platform, then you can actually sleep two people side by side under a uh, boom tent. One on either side of the centerboard trunk. Thanks for dropping by building the Alpha Dory. Um, it's you guys' comments, subscriptions, likes, and support that uh, keep this channel going. So, you know, a huge, massive thank you for uh, for that. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.